In this video, we will show you how to replace your front wheel bearing. On this Honda Civic, this will be located behind your front wheel, mounted installed into the front knuckle. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you're going to want to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle with the suspension hanging. Once you've done that, continue on to removing all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts, the hub cap, assuming you have one, and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, continue on to removing your 32 millimeter axle nut. Next, continue on with a hammer and punch. We'll come right in the center of the axle to break it free from the wheel bearing. Once you have movement in this area, you can continue. Now that we have the axle broken free, Let's continue on to pushing back our caliper piston. To do this, we'll be using a small pry bar. Carefully get in between this area of the caliper and pry up against the rotor itself. Once you have a little bit of movement from this area, we'll be making our way to the back side. You're going to be looking for two 17 millimeter headed mounting bolts that hold the bracket to the knuckle. You'll find that you have one of the 17 millimeter bolts up nice and high and the other ones located directly below it. Remove the first one, quick inspection, and then start it in just a couple threads. Now we can remove the second bolt and we do not have to worry about the caliper falling off and potentially hurting us. Now we can remove the caliper and hang it aside, making sure that we put no pressure on the flex hose itself. The next thing that we'll do is remove the rotor. To do that, it's a good idea to use one of your lug nuts and put it on just a few threads. Now we'll use a bit driver to remove our two Phillips head screws. Give these screws a quick inspection, you will be reusing them. Now we can remove the rotor from the area. If yours feels like it's stuck in position, go ahead and give it a couple taps with a hammer. Remove the rotor. Now let's move along the back side of the knuckle. We're looking for where the outer tie rod end connects to the knuckle. Commonly, you're going to find that you have a locking cotter pin in this area. Let's remove that and then remove our 19 millimeter nut. It's a good idea to have a replacement for this cotter pin. Generally, they are not reusable. Now we'll use our 19 millimeter to remove this nut. Start that back on, just a couple threads. Continue with a hammer and tap just along the knuckle, being extremely careful not to damage your outer tie rod end. With that broken free, we can remove the nut and the outer tie rod end from the knuckle. Move along to finding your ABS sensor wire. We're going to follow that all the way down to where it connects into the steering knuckle. Remove the 10 millimeter headed bolt and then the sensor.
With the mounting bolt out of there, it's time to remove the sensor from the knuckle. It's important to mention that it is common for these to be stuck in the knuckle. Go ahead and spray it with some penetrant. Let the penetrant do its job. Continue on with a hammer and a punch of some sort. I'm just gonna use this small pry bar. I'll start tapping one direction and then make my way to the other direction, essentially rocking this sensor back and forth until the penetrant makes its way in. Then we can remove the sensor from the knuckle. Now this is exactly what commonly happens. Even though you try as hard as you can to get the ABS sensor out without breaking it, it's extremely common for it to break in the knuckle. If it feels as though it's broken in any way, you have to replace the sensor. Now with that said, I'll just get the rest of this out of here. Now once you have the sensor out of there, you want to make sure you give it a quick inspection. Make sure you don't see any cracks on the plastic or visible damage. Ours is broken, so I will be replacing it. Otherwise, go ahead and set it aside. Now let's move underneath the control arm. We're going to start removing the ball joint from the control arm. Yeah, if you were to look up along this area, you can tell that the ball joint is attached to the knuckle with a nut up here. But it's hard to gain access in this area. So we'll be removing the ball joint from the knuckle on the bench once we have the whole knuckle out of position. Underneath this area, you're going to find that you have two 17 millimeter nuts and one 17 millimeter mounting bolt. Let's start by removing the mounting bolt. Continue on to each of the mounting nuts. At this point, this is completely separated. Let's make our way to where the lower aspect of the strut meets the top of the knuckle. Now up in this area along the front, you'll be finding that you have two 19 millimeter nuts. And if you were to look along the back side of the strut, you'll find that you have a 17 millimeter headed bolt that comes through from the back towards the front. Let's use a wrench to hold the bolt head and a 19 millimeter socket to remove the mounting nut. At this point, I will leave this top bolt in here and remove the lower mounting nut and mounting bolt. Now at this point, we're going to remove our final mounting bolt up along here. Once we've done that, We'll be taking hold of this, giving it a wiggle, and separating the knuckle from the strut. While doing that, we're also going to be removing the knuckle from the axle, being extremely careful not to damage the axle or the boots. Now we can lift up on the knuckle and remove it from the lower control arm. Let's get this over to the bench so we can finish removing that lower ball joint. Now over on the bench, we can continue on with removing our ball joint. On this, you're going to find that you have a locking pin. We'll just use some cutters to carefully grab onto this. We don't necessarily want to damage it unless of course you have a brand new one. We'll just give that a quick inspection, make sure it is still reusable. If it is not, you can also use a plain old cotter pin. Now that we have that out of there, I used a little bit of penetrant on the mounting nut. Use a 19 millimeter to remove this nut. Give that castle nut a quick inspection. The next thing that we'll do is take that nut and start it on there a few threads. We want to make sure that we do leave a gap in between the knuckle and the nut. 
The reason for this is because we will be tapping on this area to attempt to break the ball joint free from the knuckle. Now to remove this, you can either use a ball joint separator in this area. You want to be extremely careful not to damage the joint or the boot. Otherwise, you can tap directly on this area. We're going to try to cause some vibration to break this free. Remove the ball joint and the nut. All right, and there it is, friends. Over at the press, let's carefully put this in place. Now what we're aiming to do is align this directly underneath the press so we can press out the hub from inside the bearing. You wanna make sure that you support behind this area here and then right over on this area. As you'll notice, the backing plate does come along this area. The next thing we'll do is find a spacer that fits directly over the hub, but not onto the bearing. We do not want to press out the bearing yet. Double check to make sure we're properly aligned. Put in one more spacer here. Now we can start applying pressure. Now that we have the hub out of there, Along the front side here, you can tell that we have a snap ring. Go ahead and soak that with some penetrant. Now we'll use some snap ring pliers inside of each one of these little ports. Squeeze on that, should want to separate. This is under spring tension, so you want to be extremely careful as you pry it out of place. Just work our way around. Clean this down, give it a quick inspection and set it aside. Back over at the press, we'll continue on pressing the bearing out from the back side of the knuckle out towards the front where we just removed that clamp from. I'm going to use a spacer right up against this area to start pressing it down. There we go. It looks like we've got some movement from this area. There's our bearing. Now that we have the bearing out of there, it's always a good idea to pay close attention to the knuckle itself and make sure it's not damaged. Other than that, you also have that backing plate. As you can tell, ours is completely rotted and it's pretty much ready to separate. At this point, it's a perfect opportunity to go ahead and replace this. To replace it, you'll find that there's three Phillips head screws holding it in place. We will be replacing this backing plate. You're going to find that you still have the outer race for the wheel bearing attached to this you're going to have to remove it. You can do this using a puller of some sort or even a torch, whatever works best for you. Now, obviously the easiest thing at this point would be to replace the hub. But if you're not, to get the race off of here, there's several different things you can do. You can try to cut it in some way, but be extremely careful not to damage the hub. Other than that, you can apply some heat and try to spin this hub. While it heats up this race, it's going to expand and start making its way down, which is the way we're going to do it. I'm going to slide this right over the socket and that will press up against the inside of the hub, right inside here. The reason why I have the extension on there is so that as I'm spinning it, it can't necessarily fall down and potentially hurt me. Now that we have the race off of the hub, just go ahead and give that a quick inspection. Make sure it is still reusable. Otherwise, you're going to have to replace it. Ours looks fine. Now we'll continue on with the installation of our brand new bearing. Have a look at both sides. You'll find on one side, you have this magnetic race that makes its way all the way around. That's for the ABS. It needs to be facing towards the inboard side. So we'll take this and we'll put it down in this position. Start it in there so it's as level as possible. Now we can continue on using our old original bearing. You want to make sure you use the side that has the race taken out of it. Essentially, we only want to have this area that makes its way all the way around 
pressing it against this outboard area as well. Never press up against the inside of your new bearing, otherwise you will destroy it and you're going to have to replace it again. We'll take this, make sure it's properly aligned. Now with that properly aligned, we'll use a spacer and we can start pressing this down. As we do so, you wanna make sure you're going down as level as possible. If you're kinked off to the side, it's going to bind and it's going to damage the bearing. This isn't a race. Now at this point, it feels as though there's a lot of pressure on the press itself. So what we want to do is go ahead and remove the adapter and the original bearing and double check to make sure that the new bearing is down below where that lock clip will be. Double check all the way around. We'll have a look from the front side here. This looks perfect. A quick look along the back side. That looks good as well. Now that we're sure both sides look good, let's continue on with our snap ring. We'll take this and put it into position. Now we'll just double check to make sure it's completely seated all the way around. Back at the press, let's continue on by taking our hub and putting it on a spacer so we're making sure we do not damage any of our lug studs. We just wanna have the center right on there. Make sure this is level as possible, straight as possible and then continue on with the hub and the brand new bearing. Slide this on there. Once again, trying to make everything as level as possible. Now to press this down in, now to press this in, you wanna make sure you only press on the center. Never press on the magnetic ring that comes along this area. As you press this down, take hold of the knuckle and pivot it around as you continue, making sure that it's not binding in any way. Now right there, I feel as though I have some pressure. Make sure that's nice and tight. At this point, we can remove pressure. Let's continue on with installing our lower ball joint to the knuckle. Start the nut on there. With this started, let's bottom it out and then torque it to 58 foot-pounds. Now we can torque this to 58 foot-pounds. Once you have that torqued, the next thing you want to do is locate the hole in the stud of the ball joint and align it with one of the slots on the nut. If it's not aligned, you need to continue tightening the mounting nut until the very next slot is. Once you've done that, you're going to continue on with one of the locking clips, either the original one or a brand new cotter pin. Double check to make sure it's completely secure. If you're using a locking cotter pin, you wanna make sure you peen it over in some way so it cannot loosen up on you while you're driving down the road. Now over at the vehicle, let's use some copper anti-seize and coat the splined area of the axle. Now we can start installing that knuckle. Let's take this and start putting it in position. We're going to align the lower ball joint studs with the lower control arm. While doing so, let's also make sure that we align the axle with the bearing. Now we'll continue on with aligning the knuckle with the lower aspect of our front strut. Start in your strut to knuckle mounting bolts coming from the rear towards the front.
Continue on with your mounting nuts. Now, if you are reusing your mounting hardware, it's a good idea to use a little bit of thread locker. At this point, we'll continue on to snugging each one of these. Once we have them snug, we'll torque them to 67 foot pounds. Now let's make our way to where the ball joint connects to the lower control arm. The next thing we'll do is start on each of the pieces of our mounting hardware, snug them up, and then torque those to 43 foot pounds. The next thing that you will want to do is make sure you clean the mating surface of your brake rotor. As you can tell, our brake rotor isn't in the best condition. I will be replacing this in a future video. But for you, go ahead and sand this down and make sure that there's no rust or debris. You can use a wire brush for this if you had to. Once you have the back side of the rotor clean, continue on with some anti-seize along the mating surface of your wheel bearing. Now we can install the rotor. Before you do so, you want to make sure that you have your mounting holes properly aligned. That looks good. Now we can install those Phillips head mounting screws. Now it's time to move along to reinstalling our brake caliper. While you do so, make sure that that flex hose is not twisted in any way. Get the caliper in place, start in each of your mounting bolts, and then torque them to 80 foot-pounds. Now it's time for the outer tie rod end. Let's slide that into the knuckle. Install your mounting nut. Now that we have that started on, snug it up, torque it to 40 foot pounds. When tightening this, you might happen to find that the tie rod stud will spin on you. If that's the case, we'll use a pry bar, come underneath the tie rod, up against the control arm, apply some pressure, holding it in the proper position. Once you have it properly torqued, continue on with a locking cotter pin. We'll slide this right on through the hole and pin it over, so there's no way this nut can loosen up on its own while you're driving down the road. Now we can secure that ABS sensor into the knuckle. Let's bring that down and slide it into position. Start in your mounting bolt, snug it up, and then torque that to 7.2 foot-pounds, which essentially converts to 86 inch-pounds. Double check to make sure everything's secured and it's not tangled or stuck on anything. Now we can install our axle nut. You'll notice that I used a thin amount of motor oil. We'll just put this right on here and make sure we bottom it out by hand so we do not damage the bearing using an impact tool. Now that we have this snug, we're going to torque it to 134 foot-pounds. 
what you'll find when you go to torque this is it's going to want to spin on you. Now, since that's the case, you can just use a bar coming across your lug studs, holding this in the proper position. Once you have it torqued, you want to look for the slot in the axle shaft. We're going to peen the nut down into that slot using a hammer and a punch. Make sure that's completely peened down into that slot so this nut cannot loosen up. Now we can install our wheel. Install your hubcap, making sure that you align your valve stem hole. Start on all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts, bottom them out. We'll get the wheel back on the ground and torque each of the lug nuts to 80 foot pounds. Now with the wheel safely on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Okay friends, we've got our vehicle back together. At this point, go ahead and take it for a road test. Make sure you don't have an ABS light and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.